You may not even be aware of it, but here are three signs that you have a deep sister wound. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're here because you want to heal, you're on your spiritual awakening journey, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to spread my message as far as possible so I can help support you on your spiritual and healing journey. I think women will agree that they are known, we are known for gossiping, backstabbing, uh, bitching, talking behind each other's backs. And these are all kind of obvious signs of a sister wound. And a sister wound I'm referring here to is a sisterhood wound, not a sibling wound. I'm talking about women friends. And where this sister wound actually comes from is from the witch hunts, from the witch trials. It's deep generational trauma, the wounding that has been passed down generations and it's now like in our DNA. I won't go into too much detail today about the patriarchal system, the deep sister wounds, where it originates from, but what I'm gonna do is just give you three signs that you may not even be aware of that you do have a sister wound. So number one, is you find it hard to trust. So this can even go back to your mother wound. Because she is a woman, it can kind of link up and even be at the root cause of your sister wound because she is your first female relationship. Even when you I weren't even born, You're, you was inside your mother's wound and it was your first relationship, how your mother interacted with you in the wound and as you grew up. And so you may have picked up some traits, some wounding around the feminine. And so this can be passed down onto our own children if we're not aware of it. And then we kind of, spread that out towards other women as well. But often it's because we don't feel like we trust the feminine. We don't trust because it kind of goes back, because it does go back to these witch hunts trials where we were trying to survive in the patriarchy at the time. And so we find it hard to trust because we're all competing, especially back then, and even now in the patriarchy. So we're all backstabbing each other, we're all trying to be in this rat race. And so we find it hard to trust because somebody might end up going and dobbing you in. <laughs> so along this way, we find it hard to trust. When someone has broken deep trust, maybe it's with a secret, you can find it in a friend when you was a child, maybe you can find it in a secret or something with your mum and she humiliated you, the friend humiliated you, told everybody else and you felt like you could trust in that person, what happens now is you close yourself off to other sisters, to other women, and you feel you cannot trust them no longer. And you go about life holding on to this wound. And often what we can also see is when we don't trust women is that we tend to make friends with men. We tend to find that, oh, I get along with men easier because there's less gossiping, less bitching, but it all comes down to this deep-rooted wound that you're not able to trust because somebody broke that trust previously. What also we can pick up that trust wound is because of bullying, when we went through a lot of bullying, maybe that's you, maybe you were the bully, there's no judgment here, but I've been somebody that's said mean things to people and I've had that directed at me a lot <laughs> throughout my whole life. And so we begin to not trust women anymore because of the hurt, the pain. Which leads me on to my second sign. This sign is actually a little more subtle. It's not 
something that you are likely to be aware of. So when we are holding on to these wounds and beliefs about women, so we all believe women are gossiping, maybe somebody did break trust, you're holding on to that, and then women are backstabbers and just jealous people, they're jealous of all their friends, or you say, oh, she's just jealous of me, and you end up in some bickering, competitive argument with your friend. When we're holding all of these deep generational beliefs, we end up giving off that frequency because we're holding on to that and coming from that place, that low vibrational state. What happens is we are constantly attracting into our lives other women that will disempower us. If we've held on to that wound where as a child somebody disempowered us, that other girl, to spread that lie about you, told everybody your secret, we hold on to that because we haven't been able to process it and uh, let it go. We're holding on to that. So then we often are still giving off that frequency, that wounded frequency. So we will always attract into our lives other situations, other women that will disempower us. And this has happened to me. So during my primary school years, if you're aware of the UK education system, the primary school, you have the infants and then you have the juniors. The juniors is like year three to year six, which is roughly, I think, seven years old up to 11. And obviously you have the different classes for the different age ranges. And when I was in that juniors, I was bullied by a particular girl the entire time and obviously this made me feel like I couldn't trust people. She embedded a deep wounding of lack of money, a money wound because she was very wealthy and she looked down upon me because I was in poverty and my mum didn't have a job, we didn't have any, like much money. So she would always put me down, always think I was some kind of disgusting, like something beneath her. And obviously this hurt for years, she would do this to me and and there was one time where she wanted my help with something. I think other people were being mean to her or they something was going on and we were in the, the girls' toilets and she reached out to me and I was just stood there thinking, who the fuck do you think you are coming to me for help when you're constantly putting me down, thinking you're some almighty god up here and that I've got some disease, because that's what she would do. She'd be like, oh, I'm not touching that, you've touched that. And I held on to that wounding a lot. That is deep wounding when you're constantly every day, and then you start forming these beliefs about yourself. And so because I held on to that, later in my adult life, I found a job at a nursery, and there was this narcissistic boss, a manager, and she would act all nice to every single person that joined, then after a while she'd start showing her true colours and say to you, I don't like you anymore, and start putting you down, putting you down, and putting you down, to the point where I was crying every day. And because I just didn't want to go in, she put me down so much and it felt like a dictatorship at this job. If you didn't do this paperwork by this time, you would be fired. And she would think she was this almighty God, just like this girl that used to bully me. And the really interesting thing here was that after a few months of starting this job, the girl that used to bully me turned up at the nursery one day and I could not believe it. I don't think she noticed me, but she was the auntie of one of the children that attended the nursery. And obviously I was really kind of like of trying to avoid her. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's her. And I found it really interesting how 
that that scenario was played out again because I was still holding on to that wounding. And it was like these people were coming back into my life and the disempowering feeling I was getting because I was refusing to, I guess, let go of it. I was not processing this emotion. So I was constantly, and because I was holding on to that, I was giving off the frequency, the vibration of that I deserved these people to treat me like shit. And now I've done a lot more inner work. I've left that job, thankfully. I only managed, I think it was a year, a year and two months or something like that. And I was just, I've, I'm done. <laughs> and, but now I've done a lot of inner work. I've done a sister wound in work. So the third and final sign that you may have a sister wound is actually that you feel insecure. You maybe you have a loud inner critic, but often we are not aware of this. So last November, I did a lot of shadow work and I realized I'm actually quite insecure. I'm insecure about my content. I'm insecure about just my business. I'm probably insecure about other things. So I'm just not consciously aware of it yet. And I realized that I had a loud inner critic. And if you go and watch some of my other videos around self-love, I talk about this and the work that I've done and how I came to understand that because when we have that insecurity, we project it onto other women because other women have made us feel insecure or your mother has made you feel insecure. So then you project it onto other women and insecurities and inner critic could be things like your weight, your success, how successful somebody is compared to you. You feel insecure because they've got that really wealthy paid job, the flashy car, and you're living like in a council flat somewhere. That's me. I live in a council flat. I'm not ashamed of it. We all start from somewhere. So we all have these insecurities because girls have bullied us about our weight. Girls have put us down. And this is just the shadow of the feminine and the generational wounding that we hold onto from the witch trials. And let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do a video all about the shadow of the feminine, where that comes from, the witch trials, the patriarchal system. But for now, if you would like to continue watching my videos, check out this video next and then I will see you over there. Much love.